Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm the host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement. Welcome here today. Uh, I've got an important discussion for you because I've seen so many men who are struggling in their lives. They're dealing with setbacks. They're dealing with hardships. They're dealing with discomfort. Uh, and a lot of these guys are wanting to throw in the towel. Uh, I read that st the statistics that show that suicide rates are almost as high, if not as high as they've ever been. And a bulk, a, a large majority of those committing suicide are men. Why is this? Well, there's a lot of reasons. And what we've been talking about over the past eight and a half years now describes not only some of the reasons men are struggling so much, but also the antidote to it. So what I want to do today is I want to share with you five key strategies and tactics that you can employ in your own personal life when you're dealing with setbacks. I titled this episode, You Are Not Out of the Fight, Never Out of the Fight. Guys, you aren't out of the fight. And I know it's a fight. I know it's a battle. I know it's a struggle. I know how many of you are dealing with hardship right now, whether it's a separation or a divorce uh, bankruptcy, financial issues, medical trouble, loss of a loved one, lawsuit, losing a job. Guys, we are dealing with some very difficult and demanding challenges. And if you look at those challenges and they become so daunting and overwhelming and you don't have solutions to deal with them, then it's not real hard to see why in these circumstances, so many men are depressed, they're anxious, they're suicidal, and then eventually they act on these things which is never the answer. That is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. But let's help you get through these challenging times. Uh, the first thing that I want you guys to know is that uh, you have to know the battle that you're fighting, all right? I, I just gave you an example of what might be going down in your life, and you might be going through a divorce. I went through a divorce earlier in the year. Uh, it's been a very painful uh, 14 months now, and so, I, I, because I talk openly about it, I know how many other men are dealing with similar circumstances. And if we want to achieve and we want to overcome and we want to continue to be good fathers to our children and we want to continue to uh, improve ourselves, even though the marriage didn't work out the way that we wanted it to or the way that we anticipated it would, then we're going to have to know that there's a certain battle that you're going to need to fight. And I started using this terminology eight years ago when we started the battle. Right. And I even have it in my first book, The Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Men. And I had a lot of people tell me, oh, it's not a battle. You're using hyperbole. It's not that bad. No, it is. It's a battle. It's a struggle. It's a challenge every single day. And if you're dealing with one of these hardships or any number of hardships you could be dealing with, then you know how challenging it really is. But the battle is not the external, it's not the surface level battle. The battle that you need to wage and the battle that you need to fight is for your own well being. That's your physical health. That's your mental health, emotional, spiritual health. If you start getting lost in the weeds and you start dealing on these surface level skirmishes and confrontations, like trying to win your wife back uh, or retry, trying to, to rebuild relationships or, or you know, dealing with it on the surface level, the actual thing in front of you, you're not dealing with the root problem. The problem that may have actually got you into the place that you are right now. Guys, we have to look out after our own well-being. Nobody's going to do it for us. Nobody's going to encourage us to do it. What you're going to hear from mainstream culture and society is two things. Number one, you're not needed as a man. We hear that all the time. It's regurgitated over and over and over again in Hollywood, the media, legacy media, academia, even the medical community says through the American Psychological Association that masculinity is inherently toxic and destructive. And so we need to rid ourselves of our natural inclinations to be aggressive or violent or dominant or exercise stoicism. Guys, this is what we're being fed. We're being fed this nonsense that tells you uh, out of the gate and not just you, but your children, your sons, that they're no good. They're no good the way they are. They need to sit down, shut up, color within the lines, do what they're told, toe the line and act frankly, more like little girls, then we would have them a desire to act more like boys and men and teaching them how to harness masculinity. So that is one thing that we hear often in, in society is that you're not needed. Okay. That's just, it's the furthest thing from the truth. You are needed. Uh, Florida is in the midst of dealing with a hurricane right now. You know, who's going to go rescue those people. You know, who's going to go save those people. You know, who's going to step up, you know, who's going to donate money. You know, who's going to go put themselves in harm's way. You know, who's going to take their resources, trucks, boats, vehicles, uh, generators, 
and, and, and actually donate that and, and serve with that, those resources they have, that's going to be the men. I'm not, I'm saying women are incapable of doing it. Just look throughout history. I mean, we don't need to look very far to realize that in times of crisis, people turn to the men. And in times of ease, like we have in these modern times, we're put up on the shelf only to be tucked away and brought out when we're needed. You're always needed. You're needed in the family. You're needed in the community. You're needed in your business, your leadership, your ability to protect, to provide, preside is always needed. So guys, we need to take care of ourselves. The other thing that we hear from society is that you should not take care of yourself. Right now we see it a little bit in self-development spaces and places like this with the Order of Man podcast and movement. But generally speaking, we're expected as men just to serve. Always go out there and serve. Always go out there and take care of other people. Always go out and sacrifice and commit and focus on providing as much value as possible. And I would agree with that. You absolutely should. But if it comes at the expense of your own well-being, you can only do that for so long before you burn up and you burn out and you get depressed and you get anxious and eventually maybe even suicidal and then eventually maybe even act on those suicidal tendencies. Guys, you have to take care of yourself. Yes, help your neighbor mow their lawn. Yes, donate to charity. Yes, spend the weekend uh, at, at the homeless shelter or, 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 or give your money away to charity. Yes, do all those things, but not at the expense of yourself. The battle is for yourself. It's for your own well-being. If you have this beautiful piece of machinery, let's say you got a brand new uh, saw, state of the state of the art technology, this brand new saw, and you've got it in your shop. What are you going to do? You're going to take care of it, right? You're going to invest in it. You're going to make sure that after you get done using it, you, you, you either replace the saw blades or you sharpen the saw blades. Uh, you're going to dust it off. You're going to clean it out. You're going to make sure it's operating correctly. You're going to make sure it's being supplied to the right power source. So there's no electronic issues. This is what you're going to do with this type of machinery. Okay, if it's a car, if you get a brand new car, I don't care if it's an old Toyota Tacoma or if it's, you know, some sports car Bugatti, I, I'm not in the world, but you know, the, 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 the fanciest sports car that you can get, you're going to take care of it. You're going to put the right fuel in it. You're going to get it detailed. You're going to tell your kids not to bring their McDonald's happy meal into the car and get all their fries and gunk and bull crap all over the place. You're going to invest in making sure that that thing looks good and it operates the way that it should. You're going to get oil changes. You're going to do regular maintenance on it. You're going to upgrade it with other things that maybe you would like new wheels, new tires, different lights, like different stereo system, sound system. You're going to, you're going to invest in it. Do you invest in yourself? Do you go to the gym? Do you hit the gym regularly? Do you go to church or have some sort of higher calling or higher responsibility than, than just yourself? Are you journaling? Are you reflecting? Are you praying? Are you meditating? Are you reading good books? Are you listening to good podcasts? Are you fueling your body correctly? Are, are you moving? I think I already said, are you working out? Like these are the things that we need to do. And I know they're not always comfortable. They're not always easy. It's not always convenient. Um, it's, it's hard at times, but you have to do it. And you know, you know, unequivocally that you are going to feel better if you do those things. So if you're in the midst of dealing with a divorce or the midst of overcoming the loss of a loved one, or you just lost your job, or you're dealing with depression for any number of reasons, then the first line of defense, and this is point number one, is know what battle you're fighting. And that battle is for your own well-being. Everything else we can take care of. But first and foremost, it's a battle for your well-being. Number two is we need to win the battles. Okay. I'm not talking about the war necessarily. The war is the big thing, like the divorce or the job loss or the, whatever it might be. You need to win the battles. Those are the day-to-day -day activities that take place that are seemingly insignificant. These are little skirmishes. These are little challenges or pain points or frustrations or hiccups down the road. Win those things. Okay. You win enough of those little battles and the war is going to be won. All right. So if it's a, if it's a divorce, for example, some of the battle might be fighting for your right to maintain relationship with your kids. Some of it might be uh, taking your kids on a trip so that you can connect more deeply with them, or maybe coaching their, their sports teams or sending them a message today and telling them that you're thinking about them. If it's dealing with the loss of a loved one, a small thing you might be able to do is you might be able to help somebody else who's dealing with something very similar. 
that's a one way that you can win these little battles to help you feel better about what you're currently going through because you're putting action, you're putting ideas into action and you're moving the needle and you're beginning to feel better about yourself. That's your well being and the environment around you. Because the truth is we do want to create value. We do want to add value into people's lives. We do want to be an asset. And this is how you do it. Win these small battles. You win enough of these small battles, you're going to win the war. But if you're so focused on the end result, the external result, like is, this is the end result that I want, and you're not focused on the day-to-day, -day, the grind, even the minutia, the challenging times that you're dealing with, it's going to be hard to win that war. So what I would suggest to you is I would document what I need to do on a daily basis to win. If it's trying to reconnect with my kids, then I'm going to document what I can do specifically to ensure that they know that I love them. And I'm going to do those things on a daily basis without fail, without hesitation. And I know that if I do those things, the result tends to take care of itself. If I'm having some medical complications, um, gosh, maybe it's something as severe as some sort of a, a brain injury where you're learning how to, how to walk again or talk or speak again. Okay, that will come. But today, we just need you to get out of bed. Today, you just need to take one step. Today, you just need to stand there. Consider that a win. Alan Placer, uh, one of my good friends and member of our Brotherhood, the Iron Council, often talks about celebrating the small wins. We don't need to overlook things that are seemingly insignificant and say that's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. It is a big deal. And if you do those enough, you're inevitably going to win the war. Number three is you need to engage reinforcements. Guys, like you can't do it alone. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how, 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 how mentally fit you are. You can't do this alone. Let's get over that idea right now. Just bury it in the trash because that idea is nonsense. And even if you can, you're going to exert yourself so heavily that you're wasting precious assets, resources, and, and, and tools because you're going so hard in it that you don't have the energy or capacity to do anything else. Guys, enlist reinforcements. What does that look like? It means getting on the phone and calling a friend. Hey, I'm struggling with this. Can we get together? Can we go hit the driving range? Or can we go to the, the shooting range? Or can we go out and grab a bite for dinner? Or can we go to the, the, the game? Like, Go be around other men. Find something to do. Guys are like, well, I don't know. There's not any guys in my area. That's not true. There are. You know how I know that? Because I get messages every day from guys who say the exact same thing. And I promise you, you guys are probably closer in proximity than you think you are. If everybody's telling me there's no guys in my area to connect with, then that tells me that nobody's actually actively going out there and doing something about it. So that's on you. That goes back to your well-being. You have to enlist the reinforcements. Nobody's going to come to your rescue and say, hey, Ryan, you know, you seem like you're having a hard time. What can I do to help you? There might be those in your circle who will do that. But generally speaking, not many people are going to do that. It's up to you to go out and tell a friend, I'm struggling. Can you spend some time with me? I know that might make you feel weak or, or less than. It doesn't mean that at all. Because I'll guarantee you that that individual you reach out to has also struggled in his life. If he's not currently struggling, he might need the exact same thing that you're requesting right now. And you two can serve each other. You can help each other out in that way. But only if you exercise a little bit of courage to, to go out there and connect with another man who you need to connect with in order to achieve what you need to achieve. Another way to enlist reinforcements is to hire mentors, coaches, read good books, listen to podcasts, go to events, sign up to newsletters. It's all there and most of it is free. So if we're complaining about no good men and no good information and nobody this and nobody that, you're lying. At least you're being ignorant. It's all out there. It's all available. Again, nobody's going to do it for you. This is about your battle. And it's your battle to re-enlist, or excuse me, to enlist reinforcements. Number four, in defeat. And guys, there will be setbacks. Again, if you're going through a divorce, you could have a, a pretty decent working relationship with your ex. And then all of a sudden, it could go sideways for whatever reason. Uh, you could be connecting and rekindling with, with your kids. And then something happens either in their life or your life, and it goes sideways. Uh, you could have a medical condition that you're dealing with and you feel like you're on the mend and really getting better. And then all of a sudden 
an illness flares up or you get re-injured. You could lose your job and have all sorts of prospects for a job and feel pretty comfortable with getting something lined out. And then all of a sudden it all comes crashing around. You could have external factors like the response to COVID that hinder you from going out and getting a new job. You could feel like you're finally getting on top of things financially. And then a hurricane makes landfall in Florida and wipes out your home. Like these things are going to happen. I, I wish I could tell you it's never going to happen. I wish I could tell you that if you do all these things, these, these five things I'm going to tell you today, this magic formula that everything's going to work out perfectly. Well, we know it isn't. So we need to anticipate. We need to be aware of that. And in defeat, and there will be some defeats along the way in these battles, the key here is to learn the lesson. It's not to wallow in it. It's not to cry about it. It's not to sit in it. It's not to give it more precedent than it deserves, more weight than it really is. It's to chalk it up and say, yep, that sucked. That didn't go as, as I would have planned or I would have liked, but why? Well, I wasn't taking care of myself the way I should. So an injury, for example, you're dealing with an injury and it starts to flare up again, or you have another injury and you ask yourself, okay, well, what did I do here? Well, you know, maybe you didn't go to PT, physical therapy for the last week, or you didn't do it at all. Or if you did do it, you kind of did it half, half, half assed. Could that have something to do with being re-injured? Probably. So what's the lesson? Go to PT, do the prescribed movements in the prescribed order for the prescribed amount of time so that you can actually heal. Doctors have gone through this. They know what they're doing for the most part. They know what they're doing. They, they've seen it. They've done this before. As long as you're working with somebody credible, again, this is a, re, a endless reinforcements conversation now, but learn what the lesson is and then change. I'm so sick of hearing guys say, well, you know, if they don't like me and this is just the way I am, it's not just the way you are, okay? The way you are today has been created over 40 years potentially of your life. If you're telling me, well, it's just the way I am, you weren't born that way. Sure, we're born with some predisposition for certain characteristic and personality traits, but the way you speak, the way you communicate, how aware of yourself you are, what your worldview is, that stuff was all learned. Most of the way that you operate has been learned. Had a really good conversation with a good friend, John Deloney, who's coming back on the podcast to talk about his upcoming book. And one of the things that he was saying in the interview is, as he was talking about some of the struggles that he was dealing with, is he said, I don't have a psychology for that. I didn't have a psychology for that. And what he meant is he did not have a map for that. The reason that you're in the position you are right now is because of a map that you've created or other people have created for you that you've adopted over time and played so often that it now it just feels like, well, this is just who I am. No, it isn't. It's not at all who you are. It's who you created. It might even be who you are right now, but you're not destined to be that person. So learn the lesson, learn the psychology, learn the map and implement a new map. If something's not working, you need to change something. You need to change A or multiple variables. And as soon as you do that, you're going to produce a different outcome. I remember years ago, I had sleep apnea and restless leg syndrome. So bad that as my legs would twitch and move throughout the night as often as they would, I would wear holes in my sheets. And people said, oh, well, you need a CPAP and you need to do this and you need to do that. And the first thing I did is I thought to myself, well, what if I lost 30 pounds? What would that look like? And that's what I did. I lost 30 pounds, 40 pounds. Eventually I lost 50 pounds and lo and behold, restless leg syndrome went away. I was able to sleep, 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 excuse me, sleep apnea went away. I was able to sleep. Now I know guys are gonna be like, well, it's not every situation. I'm not saying every situation. Okay. If there's like an actual medical condition Sure, get some help, get the CPAP. I'm not putting you down if that's the case. What I'm saying is that I created a new way of living which produced different results. Your results may vary. I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you an example as to doing different things yields different results in your life. Okay, if you're spending a bunch of time on YouTube watching nonsense or jacking off to pornography all the time, and you change from doing that to watching educational, motivational, inspirational videos on YouTube. And instead of jacking off to porn all the time, you begin to read books 
that are uplifting, edifying, supporting, educational, is it any surprise that your life is going to be better? Of course, it's going to be better. So create a new psychology, create new maps, and learn the lessons that need to be learned. Last thing, guys, I would tell you, dig in. Dig in. This is going to be a long campaign. Depending on the severity of what you're dealing with, things like this, divorces, job loss, overcoming the loss of a loved one, dealing with your own personal hardships, any number of things, they're not easy solutions. It's not like do these five things and then tomorrow you'll be feeling better. You may not. You may not be feeling better next month. You may not feel better next year. I don't know. But what I do know is that if we put ourselves in the position where we're trenched in and we dig in and we fortify our position and we begin to win these small battles and we know that this is going to be a long battle, this is going to be a long road, we give ourselves a greater chance for success. In, uh, in the movie A-Team, and I'm going to paraphrase here, Hannibal says, if you give me a, you know, a week, I'm good. Give me a, a, a month and I'm great. Give me six months and I'm unbeatable. This is what I'm talking about. If we think that our problems are going to go away just because we change today, you're going to throw in the towel way too soon. This isn't working. What Ryan said is bullshit. I don't believe in this. I don't buy into this. And you may not even vocalize it, but subconsciously, that's what you're telling yourself. If, on the other hand, you have a realistic expectation that I'm in this game forever, I've planted my flag. For example, if you're trying to work to rebuild relationships with your kids and you say, well, I'm going to do these things. And if they respond, then, you know, I know it's working. They may not respond right away the way that you like to your liking. So what do you do? You throw in the towel? No, of course you don't throw in the towel. What you do is you plant your flag and you say, I'm going to be this type of father, whether they respond or not. Whether it takes one day, one week, one month, one year, or the next 20 years, this is what I'm going to do because this is what a good father would do. And we plant our flag and we do our work and then we let the results play out, whether it's immediately or if it takes decades to achieve what you want to achieve. It doesn't matter. You're not going anywhere. You're in this game forever. Guys, I hope that serves you. You're never out of the fight. When you're dead, you are, I suppose. But up until that point, as long as that air is still pumping through your lungs and blood's coursing through your veins, you're still in the fight. Don't you take yourself out of it. Don't you give up. Don't you surrender. Don't you let the adversary win. You win. And the best way that we can do that is to follow these five principles. Number one, know what battle you're fighting. That's your own well-being. That's number one. Uh, number two is win the battles, win the skirmishes, win the small things and celebrate those things. Uh, number three, engage reinforcements, credible reinforcements, friends around you, get to work on doing that. Number four, in defeat, learn the lesson. And number five, dig in. We're playing the long game here. All right, guys, I hope that serves you. I hope that helps you. If it does, please send me a message on Instagram at Ryan Mickler or an email at ryan at orderman.com. Uh, if you know a brother who's struggling right now with anything in his life, please just click share, get the link for this episode, shoot that person a text and say, hey, man, listen to this. What can I help you with? I'm your reinforcements. What can I help you with? This is how we serve each other. This is how men engage. This is how we become valuable to the people who need us to lead. All right, guys. On that note, uh, we're going to be opening up in just under two weeks, the Iron Council, another way to enlist reinforcements. That's our exclusive brotherhood. We've got a uh, thousand plus guys in that group, all rallying around each other, supporting each other, edifying each other, uplifting each other, and working on the frameworks needed to thrive and win. This is the last time we're going to open up this year. So check that out at orderaman.com slash Iron Council, orderman.com slash Iron Council. All right, man, we'll be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.